This is Cybert signing into Red Alert 3 on the map Corporate Warfare for game number one of the Dual Duel 14 Finals in the north. Kicking off team number one is the Blue Empire. This is Zezo. As the Red Allies, this is Czar. That's team one. And in the south, we have team two as the Purple Empire. This is Dark Nage. And his teammate as the Cyan Allies, this is Andre. All right, dual duel number 14. If you follow the channel, well, you might be thinking, wait, haven't I already seen the finals to dual duel 15? And wow, just like that dog, sometimes things get a little out of order. Uh, there was a problem with one of the replays in dual duel 14. So when I went to cast the dual duel 14 finals with Waff the Wolf, uh, I realized that one of the replays didn't load, and I was like, oh. So I was actually able to pass that off to, I think, Chris, who fixed the footer for the replay. Solved my problem, but uh, Waft the Wolf, you know, he has, like, a job and relationships and uh, life, so <laughs> his record time doesn't always align with me. Hopefully, for the Duel Duel number 16 finals, we will be able to team back up again and uh, catch those finals together. But I did want to check out Duel Duel 14 because it had been recommended to me so, so long ago. And I had kind of skipped it due to one of the replays being a little bit out of whack. A-V-E. And in this case, it's A and E versus A and E. Allies Empire in a strong showing here in game number one of this best of five finals. And by the way, before we get too far into it, I do want to give a big thanks to Double Evil. If you haven't noticed, there is a game timer currently running in this uh, in the display that you see. That is indeed because of the app that Double Evil has been developing. Uh, Tengu is going to be coming in here. A couple of trades out here. Harvester is off the line, but the real killer here is Zezo with this proxy barracks coming in. Czar adds on a multi-gunner turret. And the Prospectors are now both offline. Andre's income completely flatlined, sitting with $3 in the bank and no safe harvesting at all. He never managed to grab an oil, Derek, and... Okay, uh, 2 minutes and 51 seconds was the, uh, was the time on the clock. 2 minutes and 53 seconds for the first win. And uh, Zarin Zezo with a really strong proxy play that completely gutted Andri, a.k.a. Nevercheese, and that will do it. Darknidge had no real chance of 1v2-ing that and uh, wasn't able to assist Andri as much as Andri needed. But that's it for game number one. Let's jump into game number two. And after a pretty brutal game number one... Which takes us to Isla Nublar for game number two after that brutal game number one. Feeling pretty good after just a sub three minute game as the Green Empire in the north. This is Zezo. As the Red Allies, this is Czar. Meanwhile, team number two looking for the recovery, looking for the comeback here in this best of five finals. This is Andre and rounding it out switching to allies playing purple this is Darknage all right Andre and Darknage not having a good showing uh whatever opinions you have about these players that game number one was definitely not a typical showing of their skill level Darknage is definitely not on the same level as Andre in a 1v1 setting but he's still a solid enough player for a 2v2 competition like this. And that was not a good showing for either one of these players. It is going to be a triple allies game. So Darknidge does switch up from Empire to allies. And in this case, that does mean multi-gunner turrets 
can abound for all players. In this case, Dark Nage is going to be dropping one to help lock down this dojo, deny any additional production. Zezo set this up beautifully. The one-two punch that knocked Andre out in game number one was that proxy barracks start. And in this case, it doesn't quite go anywhere. But I was trying to draw attention to the in-game timer that we now have on display. Maybe it will not be any use at all, and maybe the in-game timer is something that we can all just collectively forget. But I want to try it out. You know, we want to see if these things are useful. We're trying out some of these new features. Maybe we don't keep them all. Maybe we do keep them all. But I don't know. I feel like an in-game timer, it doesn't hurt anything. The only thing that it will do is help provide a little bit of clarity as we get used to it and we learn timings that uh, it exist within the game that we are just unaware of. Or maybe it'll be completely superfluous and we'll just sort of, uh, you know, decide after a while that it doesn't add anything. But I want to give it some time. Ooh, Vindicator flies over right in time to see, see that extra refinery coming on out. It is going to be a tier two mecha bay. Darknage will, I don't know what he's going to do with this Vindicator. All right, he is going to bomb out the refinery. That's a, that's a fair choice. Vindicators do a fair amount of damage to a refinery core. Peacekeepers are here to help put on more pressure. This is already so much a better opening. No, those Peacekeepers. Zezo with the perfect crush there gets the kill on both of those Peacekeepers. Denies them from ejecting that Imperial Warrior from the building. And it is going to be a War Factory based. Well, okay, Peacekeepers are also here. But this is two War Factory armies from two allied players. The, yeah, the Darknage is going for his fair share of multi gunner turrets and air units, but these two allied players are going pretty much pure War Factory. Even if the Riptides were produced by the Naval Yard, this is still quite a ground based army coming out from two of our allied players here in game number two. Riptides versus Peacekeepers, IFVs versus IFVs, but the Guardian Tank is now here for Andre. He's going to be able to put on the pressure. He's going to be able to push this army back, and the crush of these Peacekeepers may be the real killer of this army. Jumping inside of the building, good way to get some extra value, but those garages are so incredibly powerful that on the field, in the middle of the battle, repair is so incredibly powerful, and yes, both teams do have it but it does mean you don't need to return home for those repairs. Guardian Tank does get grabbed. Tsunami Tanks make this a much difficult fight for just the solo Andre going in a 1v2 in this moment, trying to fight Tsunami Tanks, trying to fight IFVs and PKs all together. It's a tough fight for Andre. Reinforcements finally going to be coming in for Darknage. We'll see what he actually has in the mix. It's going to be a couple of Vindicators. He will be able to get the kill on at least one of these. No, he does get a kill on one Tsunami Tank, but he splits the bombs loses one Vindicator, and that's an okay price to pay for one Tsunami and an IFV. Plus, it gives Andre some breathing room, some much-needed breathing room, chasing away those Tsunamis, giving these Guardian Tanks the opportunity to step out onto the field. It's going to be an expansion for Darknage to the north of his base, but then also into the middle of the map. Darknage takes a quick four refineries, and this boy is spending his cash well. He has got that macro going, and he is not letting it build up. Now, I say that, he might just uh, start floating a bunch of cash. But no, he's, he's doing a good job spending all of that cash for refineries. When you get them that quickly, sometimes you aren't quite ready to spend all of that cash. And we see players falter on the macro side of things. Another Tsunami Tank cleaned up. Zezo letting these Tsunami Tanks bleed away without fighting back. Double Walls may be coming in here. Zar is going to do what he can to delay this Guardian tank army, but this is a lot of Guardians here on the front line. He's going to be striking back his own Guardians coming to the front line. He is going to be able to knock down Andre a little bit here, but there's going to be the call-in of the cryo shot. Forces the dodge away, and Andre just has the better numbers. He has the better engagement, and this is where Andre just pushes on forward. One of his Guardians almost getting caught by that cryo shot, but it's an easy dodge for Andre. A player of his caliber is going to have not much trouble keeping his Guardian tanks unfrozen 
nice and warm, and especially with that repair coming in so clutch on these Guardian Strikers. Now going to be coming in. No IFVs here to support this army. No Apollos, no Tangus here either for either player, and this will be the end of the Guardian tank attack. Two, three, four Guardians going down in swift fashion. Apollo does finally show up for Darknage. He might be able to deny some of these Strikers, but no, he doesn't clip the wings on a single Striker, loses the Apollo, and suddenly Andre gets turned around loses I think four or five tanks in that engagement as Zezo holds his own in the middle of the map. War Factory is here but there are four tsunami tanks ready and waiting. Five tsunami tanks ready and waiting for anything that pops on out of that War Factory. One Guardian tank going to be going right into the action. The repairs are so powerful as I keep referencing the repair drones from this War Factory. No match for five tsunami tanks. Another multi-gunner turret does get deployed. Tsunami's able, able, easily able to absorb a couple of shots and then move on to the next target. Tsunami tank's going to be able to take down this refinery. It's going to be the Guardian tanks of Andrew that try and come in and save this fight. Vindicator's going to be passing through this area, drop their bombs and try to escape, but a fresh multi-gunner turret from Zar will assist Zezo in this attack. It's a messy fight back and forth as the strikers go down in the air and on the land, and the guardians of Andri save the day, save Dark Nidge, and keep this refinery online. The Harvester spawns back in as the last of the tsunami tanks get pushed away. Dark Nidge will find a savior in Andri. Garage is still online. Guardian Tanks moving back out. Andre's macro is perfect as he is keeping these Guardian Tank numbers moving and active nearly everywhere on the map. A cryo shot does fire off. Andre will get caught. Two tanks getting caught by that cryo shot, but it's going to have to be a commitment in to get the attack and kill them off before they unfreeze. One goes down the second, almost getting body blocked. He will pay the price as Andre does his best to save those two Guardian Tanks. And again, Andre with more multiple Guardian tank armies in different sections of the map, fighting on two different fronts, putting some pressure on Zara. Zara and Zezo join forces to try and break Dark Nidge once again, pushing forward its multi-gunner turrets, but it's going to be point defense drones on every unit on both sides of this attack or uh, both, both players of the team on the left side. Andre has not been stopped in the main base of Zar. He's keeping the pressure up as Zezo and Zar try to break through this front line, but don't find much success. Vindicator's coming in for another bombing run, forcing these tsunamis to once again take a, take a minute of rest from this fight. Switching back to the left side of the map, it's going to be the striker to try and save this base, to try and shut down these guardians as they, they garages have been so useful on both sides of the map. And the GG will come in. Andre and Darknidge going to be evening the score. This is a best of five that's just turned into a 1-1 one, one score line with three games potentially left to go. And that takes us to Battle Base Quartus for game number three. And I feel like even though we're halfway through this best of five, if this goes to game five, it's still going to be a short series with how quick these matches are in the north. Playing the Purple Empire, this is Dark Nage. So he is not a believer that allies are the only way to win. Instead, he thinks that this map, he has a better shot with Empire. We'll see, because his teammate, plain blue, plain allies, this is Andre. A sure friend to depend on. Andre always bringing good levels of play, or pretty much always. We'll see if it can carry him to victory here, because in the south, plain orange, plain Soviets, this is Zezo. And of course, that means the fourth player on this map is the red, is the allies. This is Czar. All right, we have got ourselves another one of these FFA style maps where each player has their own little quadrant, their own little section of high ground. And then they've even got this little back door area, which leads down to the water. It is going to be double refinery into an airfield. So it is not a War Factory-based allied play from Czar. 
And in this case, we actually do have uh, all three factions represented, and the two allied players are on opposite sides from each other. The fight for who will control this building is continuing, and I do like that Darknidge grabs the Oil Derrick away from Zar as well. That's a nice, strong start. Snipes the Javelin Soldier, kicks the Peacekeepers out of the building, and Darknidge is going to have his own little advantage there with infantry in the beginning of this game. And this is a little bit of a weird layout in terms of the map. You can be very close to your opponent by air, but very far by ground with just where the ramps all lead into the main bases, how the map is laid out in that way. And it does also mean taking your third is kind of weird. There are these double low ground naval expansions, which kind of make a good third and fourth, but there's no convenient place. And unless you want to brave the middle of the map, there's no convenient third on this map. As I say that, Vendies and or, uh, Vindicators and Imperial Warriors have been doing their part to play havoc on Zar, cause some problems for him. Zar, on the other hand, going to try and strike back as much as he can. He's got the Javelin Soldiers to keep that Vindicator safe. That is a nice touch to guard against the Apollos, and Andri will go for a little bit of a scout there. Tangu's going to be coming in from Darknedge, the only Tangu player in this game since Zezo has switched up to Soviets. Harvester off the line, denies that refinery, denies that income from Zar. And the holding of this building is just so annoying for Zar and Zezo. Darknidge just being a constant annoyance to this other team. And there's a snipe. This is looking really good now for Andri and Darknidge. The constant pressure, the consistent damage that they have put out on the map killing off that Vindicator, denying this Harvester, and then just keeping up the pressure and stopping Zar from ever getting up and running. Although, Zar will finally get a bit of damage back as he kills off that Apollo, a bit of revenge as he hunts down that air unit, but it's not necessarily going to be enough. Sickle going for the attack there. Andre having his own troubles, his own harassment that he has to deal with. At least he has the third in the middle of the map to help keep him floating, and these Vindicators will finally be able to clean up that Sickle. Meanwhile, on the low ground, Tangu is chasing that bullfrog, and that is indeed a Tangu. That is indeed a bullfrog. There's no sudden transport shenanigans at work here. Vindicator from Zar back up and running, and this might be the uh, the first somewhat normal game developing. Andri takes another low ground expansion. This is four refineries for Andri. He's got the hospital as well. He's got the dry dock also, and he does control his own oil derrick. So that is a nice little benefit there. Peacekeepers and any naval units will get the benefit. I mean, maybe he builds jabs also. Don't want to cut him off too short, but any ground any infantry units and any naval units will get those healing benefits tangu is going to try and fight against the apollo i do love that czar has garrisoned these structures even if it's just one javelin soldier that gives you such a strong defense to fall back on and this tesla coil is a little too far along for these four tangus to deal with they are going to be able to harass these harvesters and they will be able to maybe step outside of that tesla coil range barely not enough cash to finish up that tesla coil quickly so it was sort of stuttering on those last couple of moments giving those tangus an extra couple of seconds to blast away at that harvester and to force them to lose even more mining time with that adaptive armor. One harvester down below half health will have some difficulties just keeping up that income. But Zar goes to take back his oil, Derek, and Darknidge is basically right on top of it. Darknidge also going for the harassment against Zezo as well. And, well, what good is harassment when you've got the Athena Cannon? As Andre says, this game doesn't need to be much longer. I mean, we've only crashed, crossed the six-minute mark, and already Andre has Mirage Tanks, Athena Cannons. He's attacking his opponents with that artillery. He's bringing them down in that sense. And more Mirages, more Athenas surely on the way for Andre. The late game allies is extremely powerful, and Andre is here to knock down his opponent's base with it. Well, 
Four refineries is good if you're a Soviet player. Four refineries and an oil derrick, better. But uh, soon to be three refineries, unfortunately, for Zezo. Terror drones might be able to help break up this front line, but the backing of these Tangus means that it's never going to be an easy proposition unless the Tangus just completely run away, which they might do. Cryo shots fire off. Jabs do get caught, but not a lot that Zezo can do to capitalize on that. Multi-gunner turret doesn't actually get broken, so the combo, the combo of satellites and freeze did not work out. All right, Zezo, he might be looking to take five refineries. He did lose the one on the high ground, but he can take back that location if he can secure the low ground. And at the very least, if he gets the naval yard, or if he gets the water expansion out here on the edge, he'll be back up to four refineries, which is a much more comfortable place as a Soviet player. Tangu is going to be once again striking down the air units of Czar. The fight continues over this oil, Derek. It seems like it will never end as Czar does secure his place in the middle of the map. He's got the multi-gunner turret. He's got the jabs inside of the building. He is doing what he can to deny Darknidge from actually actually getting his economy up and running. Darknidge, who should, you know, have some relatively easy and quick expansions going up, is still just locked on those two refineries. Has the oil derrick, of course, for a time. He had two oil derricks, but he's down to just the one for now. Denied a couple of oil derrick captures because of those dojos getting sniped. And it looks like the Mirage tanks and Athena cannons and cryocopters of Andre will push back the paltry defense of just a couple of hammer tanks. Vindicators making their runs as well. Darknitch has found some success with Tangus, but not much more than that. The Tangus are good, but this army that Andre has is a game ender if it gets into the right spot. Bears don't claim many kills, and more terror drones, more hammer tanks going down. Big transform from the Tangus on the left side of the map. One harvester getting cleaned up. Czar has restarted that now, and the power plant is going to be targeted down just enough to put Czar on the edge of darkness, but the safety power plant on the right side of the map might not be around for too much longer. Athena Cannon blasts down the building. The refinery never was rebuilt in the main base. Instead, it was the water expansion out there in the corner of the map that was the replacement for Zezo. Power plant's going down, and this will be lights out. No, it won't. It'll almost be lights out for Czar, but still, he keeps himself in the light. He keeps his hopes alive, as he still has not been able to secure much of a third refinery. Looks like he may have had one in the past, but not much for now. Tangus go down, but they take a harvester with them, and Czar is finding it difficult to keep breathing, but Zezo is about to be smothered. He's about to be knocked completely out. The kill of two Mirage tanks is nice and if the game looked a little bit different the kill of two mirage tanks might be enough to keep them in this match cryocopter is going to be getting split up and the vindicator will be getting targeted down a nice touch there but the cryocopters might be the end of this economy even if they go down the Apollos, nicely done. They clip the wings of everything, and they keep all of the harvesters alive. There were no, uh, there's no like precision bomber coming in for a last-minute strike. There's no crashing bodies on top of frozen harvesters to kill off those harvesters at the last second. And now, actually, the Apollos will return back home, and they will be able to get those repairs. That was a bit of a saving move there. Czar is able to keep Zezo in the game. Zezo may not be able to keep this expansion alive for too much longer. His super reactor, his expansions may be going down, but he's bought himself some time. And now his harvester killing twin blade is now on the move on the other side of the map. The Apollo should be able to make short work of that. But trading out one twin blade for these two harvesters is not a bad thing. Even plants the twin blade, tries to plant the twin blade directly over top of the harvester in case the RNG does a bit of splash damage on death. And he was not rewarded with anything, but that was a nice attempt by Zezo. Darknidge has now built a pretty serious Tangu army. He's finally taken a third refinery, and though he may not have much more than that, Tangus and a third refinery are sometimes all an Empire player needs to keep themselves in the game. 
Apollo's going to be trying to trade out low power mode ever since that super reactor went down for Zezo. He's going to be back in uh, running operations pretty soon, but he's not back up and running just yet. Athena Cannon's getting sniped. A nice touch there. Whoever got the kill on that Athena Cannon, perhaps a Vindicator making a bombing run, getting that kill. Tangu's going to be flying over the middle of the map. Fourth Refinery wouldn't be a bad thing if this Empire player wants to go to Tier 2, wants to start putting out more units. And okay, he's going to try and clear out the middle of the map. Darknage says, this is my fight. And while it's not going to be a clean fight, he is at least going to secure the middle of the map. And he will dodge that cryo shot. Doesn't take any damage from that freeze ray. But... Andre keeps the attacks rolling, says we want revenge for game number one. It was an embarrassment, but we are about to be up in map score. We are about to be on match point, but maybe not as the Vindicators come through doing big damage, but that will be it in a little over 12 minutes. Game three goes to Andre and Darknidge. A swift cleanup there. The slow build for the first half of the game. And then once Andre got that late game army rolling, he basically never stopped. And that will send us into game number four. And that takes us to Shogun's Alley for game number four. Sometimes a bit of an awkward map to play on in the kind of northwest corner. This is the Red Allies is Czar. As the Blue Empire, this is Zezo, a team rising to the occasion, making it to the finals, and then finding themselves up against Andre, finding it very difficult to actually secure that win. Meanwhile, on the opposite side, looking to stand in their way and to claim that final victory for themselves, this is Darknage. And of course, but this time playing yellow, the one, the only, this is Andre. All right, Andre switches it up to yellow, but at least the player who is now playing blue is Empire. So hopefully we won't get those confused. Shogun Alley, it's kind of a weird map. You've got this big high ground plateau, and then you go down to a relatively close third refinery, but it's it's actually a bit of a walk from where your MCV starts over here to there on the low ground in that corner. And then, of course, you've got the mid-ground refineries that are actually in between the teams right here for a potential easy fourth refinery take, but it's just one of those maps that can turn super weird super quickly. Darknage is going for the garage, and he just won't get it. Too many Peacekeepers, too many IFVs. Really great control on this IFV by Zar. You have to give it to him. Deliberately getting super up close and personal with these uh, with these Imperial Warriors so that he does get the splash damage and he gets the knockdown. He gets that knockdown effect on those Imperial Warriors. And that is what he was going for, maximizing his damage output from that IFV. A great touch by Darknage. Or no, a great touch by Zar against Darknage is what I meant to say. Uh, Oil Derricks have been grabbed. Garage has been grabbed. Oil Derrick now being taken away from Andre. So that is going to be a little bit annoying for Andre to deal with. These walls will be annoying for Andre to deal with as well. And he will eventually kick out those Imperial Warriors. There was actually more Imperial Warriors in that building than I would have thought. But eventually, he will make this plateau safe. Andre will set himself up nicely for the mid game if he's ever able to take down this third refinery. Multi-gunner turret to clear the walls. Losing the oil derrick is annoying. Having to use your Vindicators to knock down IFVs on your teammate side of the map, also annoying, but it's not the end of the world. These, if these Tangus catch those Vindicators, that might be the end of the world. Fortunately, there's a strong Tangu and Apollo presence from Darknage and Andri, so they should be able to deal with this attack. It'll come down to the engagement. Good IFV positioning there, going to be denying those Tangus from doing much in the sky. Vindicator does get cleaned up, but a second Vindicator is here. One Tangu goes down. IFV stepping forward. No big kills for the IFVs, but they do get them on the deck. 
air units in the sky take much more damage from IFVs than units on the ground, and the IFVs blasting apart those units. Andre has nearly fallen, but he's got those multi-gunner turrets to rely on, and he's got his third refinery, so if he can just keep things going, which he's not because he's at the max amount for power, he's going to have to find a new way to defend these units. Too many IFVs here, too many Tangus. Vindicator does get one kill, but the airfield is about to go down before there can really be another refuel. There is going to have to be some kind of saving move here. One Tangu down, two Tangus down. Dark Ninja is just letting his Tangus die, and that's the end of this attack. That's the end of this defense as this attack just gets completely slam dunked into the end zone win for Zar and Zezo. Wow, that's actually it. Four and a half minutes to clean up game number four. And the longer the game goes on, Andri and Darknidge have the better chance. Andri, as that big, strong 1v1 player, the longer the game goes on, the more his skill creates a gap between the teams. But man, in these shorter games, Zar and Zezo know what they're doing. They bring the pain and they're taking us to game number five. And welcome to Honor Bound for game number five. We've got this idyllic looking spot for our last match and playing as the Purple Empire. This is Dark Nage. His teammate as the Blue Allies way out here on this island. This is Andre. Meanwhile, in the north, playing as the Red Allies. Give it up for Zar. And way out on the island, playing orange. This is Zezo. Super glad to see some of these new maps. Some of them maybe aren't the best maps in the world, but at least... They are something a little bit different. We get to see some some new attempts. Would love to see some entirely new maps just to see some uh, genuine efforts put into some 2v2 styled maps, not just these like FFA styled maps, but uh, put out some more good maps for people to learn and for people to get good on, hopefully. But... All of that to say, big thanks to Rage of Heat for putting together Dual Duel number 14. The dude runs at least one tournament a month. I guess if you count Ladder Wars, it's basically two events that people can participate in. He has been doing this for five, eight years, something like that. I think it has been about eight years. Uh, I think since 2015-ish, somewhere around there. He's basically been doing two events a month. A lot of times he's putting his own money into the prize pool, but this particular event had a $400 prize pool, 360 of that coming from Gnarly Machiavelli. So he put up a big chunk of the prize pool for this event just because he wanted to see some players compete and he wanted to support the Red Alert 3 community. But then, of course, Rage and Zouth both put in $20 each, bringing the prize pool total to $400. $360 from Gnarly Machiavelli, $20 from Rage, $20 from Zouth. So a big thanks to all of those guys. Extra special thanks to Rage for basically running the uh, Western Red Alert 3 competitive scene basically by himself. There have been a couple of other people who have done some tournaments, but no one has the consistency of Rage. 1v1 events, team events, you know, 2v2, 3v3 events, short events, long events, big prize pool, little prize pool, monthly 1v1s, monthly other events as well for going on uh, eight years now. Just a huge amount of effort from that guy, and we can't say thanks to him enough. But big congratulations to all four of these players for making it to this point. It is a hard-fought tournament, and this particular series has definitely had its ups and downs. Zezo going for a bit of harassment. It's double allies, double empire, a return to that game number one style, and it is going to be harvester harassment central, it seems. Czar and Zezo... They need to keep the pressure up. They need to keep Andre from getting up to full power in the other games. Andre getting to full power does lead to a bit of a disaster for Czar and Zezo. They're just not necessarily at the level where they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Andre in a 1v1. 
Well, for now, Andri is not going to stay contained on his island. He is going to step out a little bit, but this will leave his units a little bit vulnerable here. Three Apollos, one Vindicator. Apollos do get bombed out on the deck, get shot up and shut down as the Peacekeepers step back onto the field to try and put out some pain onto these Tangus. And the Tangus are going to be standing guard. Big transform from Darknage, but there's going to be the transform from Zezo as well, just to keep his units alive. And the Apollos and the Tangus definitely make this a difficult fight for Zar or for Darknage to try and take by himself. Zar going to be getting a single peacekeeper into the base of Darknage and doing what he can to be annoying, but ultimately that one peacekeeper won't do too too much. In game number two, it was around that six-minute mark where Andre really kicked things into another gear. Or maybe it was game number three. It was actually on Battle Base Octopon, where Andre at the six-minute mark had kicked things into tier three. And I don't think we have that same progression here. Andre been having a little bit of difficulty getting his feet under him, but also because of these spawn positions, Andre can't just go for that big ground army and then roll around the map and just eliminate everyone in his path. He has to play out on the water. He has to try and go for this expansion way down south of his spawning position. And he has to try and deal with all of this pressure from Zar and Zezo, who Zezo is just feeling like a slippery pig, always slipping through people's fingers, which uh, that's suddenly I'm aware that maybe slippery pig is not a phrase that people have encountered. <laughs> before and uh i'm not trying to insult him by calling him a pig or anything it is a pre-existing phrase that i just realized for a uh, a non-american viewer may or may be a little bit of a strange one to hear crowd shot comes in zezo doing what he can to dodge that freeze ray and the big transform form from darknage means he doesn't have to fight these apollos and he definitely doesn't want to fight five Apollo four Apollos as that uh, multi-gunner turret gets a shot off. Fight those Apollos and Andre's income just has not been fantastic this game. The harassment has been consistent, although he did get a third refinery faster than most players. And Darknage still hasn't taken a third refinery. But Andre did get a third refinery nice and quick. He just hasn't always had a third refinery working for him despite the expenditure. MCV heads back to the land, trying to escape these Tangus, and the safety of Darknage may not last forever, although double multi-gunner turrets have been deployed by Andre, so that's where part of his cash is going, is to defending Darknage and keeping Darknage in this game. Andre now going to be able to escape to the land back where he started. He has gone round and round as he has tried to avoid the constant harassment from Zezo, the constant pressure from Zar as well. Tangus reforming their front line. These Apollos just need one good engagement against Darkenage to completely wipe his Tangu force off of the map and allow Zezo to just reign supreme. And this Tangu has found the perfect spot to camp out, the perfect spot to harass that Harvester without the multi-gunner turret doing anything about it. And this Harvester may just slowly but surely end up going down to that Tangu attack. And the perfect hold command there to just stay in one spot and attack only when you're able as that Harvester gets whittled down slowly but surely. Nice cryo shot on that, uh, that multi-gunner turret. Andre trying to defend Z uh, Darknage, but ultimately not being able to as the cryo shot takes down that turret. Big transform. MCV going to be taking some damage. Cryo shot will fire off. Andre does miss every single Tangu due to the splits that are coming in. And Zar now has cryocopters out on the field. Zar, who behind the scenes has taken four refineries in total. And Oil Derek as well. His income skyrocketing above basically everyone else. Almost double that of what Darknage has brought in. Dwarfing Andre as well by 5k total resources gathered. And the MCV does get shrunk down. It will not be able to save this Mecha Bay. And the kill of the Mecha Bay might be the first real domino to fall that is irreversible. Andre trying to come up here with a an assault destroyer to save the day. 
but it feels like too little too late assault destroyer will get shrunk down it will get eliminated and this is the second domino to fall andre has not been able to keep darknidge safe darknidge has been overwhelmed and his mcv is back up to full size but he needs more than that he needs more than tangu's raining down their dead bodies on top of this mecha bay to keep himself in this game. Czar has played this one out slow and steady, and he is winning the race. He could even potentially take a fifth refinery there in the northern section of the map. Massive Tangu army from Zazo. 18 units to the four of Darknidge. And actually, one of those four was a Mecha Bay due to the way that Red Alert 3 counts units. Uh, nano cores do count as a unit so you will see those uh, building and unit numbers kind of swap places there czar and zezo playing game number five out incredibly well and they will find a little bit of difficulty here in dealing with this multi-gunner turret but three riptides is enough to overwhelm one multi-gunner turret might take down one riptide barely does but the riptides can now finish off that prospector Goodbye to that third refinery advantage that Andre had. Finally, his tier three does kick in. His tier three makes an appearance as this aircraft carrier can leave port and find a bit of damage, but Darknage has been defeated. Overwhelming firepower comes in and Darknage hands everything over to Andre. At least now Andre's income is going to be very Impressive for not very long at all. And Zezo and Czar will take game number five and will take the dual duel number 14 finals. Andre unable to defeat the two of them. Czar and Zezo putting on an incredibly impressive performance. These are two guys who I have seen in team games playing their matches but have not seen them as much in tournament czar having a very good 2022 putting out some good 1v1s putting out some good 1v1 tournament performances and here putting out also a good 2v2 tournament performance in the middle of 2022 so thank you all very much for watching i hope you enjoyed it and this is cyber signing out